everybody. So we're in the uh, guest bath off of my home office, which is where all of the resin printing happens at my house. Um, excuse, mind all the club, clutter. Uh, so I've been experimenting with resin, right? Uh, like kind of like what are the best resins for uh, minis and um, like uh, um, trying to get something that's a little bit more flexible and less, uh, less um, brittle and just like finding like the right kind of resins and curing things and getting the best amount of detail out of my prints, right? So um, I'll show you some, some prints, right? And then these guys are, uh, they're uh, very, you know, very detailed, right? Like these are, these are good prints. And then you can also see that these guys have a little bit of a uh, flex to them. The resin that I've been using, um, I've been experimenting with a cross between Swaraya, yes, yeah, Swaraya, Fast, and Tenacious. And um, Soraya Fast is a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a quick curing resin. Uh, it's, it um, is pretty inexpensive. It's a good quality resin. It's, I mean, it gets really good detail, but it's a little bit brittle, right? But um, the Soraya line, they have uh, um, tenacious and tough and um, Tenacious is a flexible resin. It's more of like a rubbery kind of resin, right? But it also has um, a little bit of a like tacky kind of gummy texture to it. Um, it's like if you, if you print, at least in my experience, if you print like 100% Tenacious, it's gonna come out sort of feeling like a gummy bear almost like has a little bit of a sticky quality to it, right? Um, so I'm gonna take a picture of these guys before I do this, just to show you the level of detail that's on these, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chuck them down the hallway. Um, I don't care about these because they I printed them just to test. They're at the wrong scale. Um, they're just way too small for anything that I would use them for. And it was just a free little file that I that I downloaded. It's a sample from somebody's store off my mini factory, right? So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna take a picture of them, I'm gonna throw them down the hallway over here, and then I'm gonna show you what they look like after. Um, and just to show you how, like a durability test. So I'm gonna take a picture real quick. Okay, here we go. Okay, you saw me. I threw them, shook them in my hands, threw them down the hallway. And uh, from what I can tell, I, I don't see any breakage. I don't see anything that, that, that broke off of these. You know, no, no tricks. Um, I'll, I'll take a picture show you that after I threw them down the hallway. So, you know, that's, that's pretty good results, right? If you can, if you can take these guys and then just, you know, uh, I'm going to throw them hard. I'm going to throw them like hard, just throw them down the hall. I do have carpet on my floor, but that's all the protection that they have, you know, from, from breakage, right? Um, but so I'll sh I'm gonna walk you through some of my process of how I've, how I've gotten the best results from uh, mixing these kinds of resins and, and how I think that this is kind of like the best K 
case for like an ABS like plastic um, and uh, and the the type of um, plastic that I would not feel bad about taking to a game store or whatever letting other people handle you know because it has like some some flexibility to it right it's pretty durable pretty tough like ABS type plastic would be like Lego plastic for example has some flex to it and, and pretty tough. Okay, so I've got some minis that just fr finished printing and um, these are going to have, you know, they're gonna have a good amount of, of flexibility to them. Um, and this, uh, this batch was, I would say it's pretty close to 50-50 Soraya Fast and Soraya Tenacious. Maybe, you know, somewhere in between two thirds and 50, 50, um, more fast than tenacious. Tenacious is going to be a lot more expensive, but it's also, you don't want a hundred percent tenacious. It's going to have, it's going to come out like a gummy bear if you'd use a hundred percent fast tenacious. So what I have here is, um, you know, there's, this is the resin printer. This is my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and then if you see in here, what this is, is this is dollar store degreaser. Um, <laughs> so this is LA's totally awesome degreaser. This stuff works really well for um, if you buy minis off of eBay or something, and then you want to strip the paint off of them, which is where this is going. This is going downstairs to the studio, and uh, I'm gonna use this one to uh, strip paint because I basically melted the basket by leaving it in here for too long and it turned it into, it melted it. So anyways, but what's, what this is, is um, it's just an ultrasonic cleaner so it vibrates the, uh, the solution at a high speed and then um, it actually cures out the, um, the, the resin that's suspended in it. So it sort of cleans itself, um, or it, it cleans the prints. It takes the, uh, the excess resin off of the prints that are sticking to the prints, and then it ends up curing it out, and then it, and then it settles to the bottom. So you can see um, I've got some in here and uh, and then if I leave this just sitting in the window sill, it will cure out. Like the uh, the uncured resin will will sit in the sun, and then it will um, solidify and sink to the bottom. And then I can just take this and uh, I can put it through like a coffee filter or a paper towel, and then it'll that'll take out the the solid resin and I can just toss that in the trash, right? And then just keep reusing this stuff. Um, so this is the new, I got a new ultrasonic cleaner. Um, this one is gonna stay upstairs and uh, I will show you how this works next. I'm gonna scrape these guys off the plate and then I'm gonna put them in here. Okay, so uh, got everybody off the build plate, and um, I save like little plastic containers like this sometimes for stuff like this that uh, um, it's part of my part of my resin printing process. So these are just going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner for a little bit, and um, yeah, I, t I leave the baskets out because I learned the hard way that you can melt these baskets by leaving them in degreaser for a long time. Um, so the uh, the degreaser, LA is totally awesome. This stuff uh, works really well for cleaning your prints um, as well as uh, stripping paint. I'm gonna strip paint off of minis, but it's also way cheaper 
than something like uh, rubbing alcohol. And it's, um, I've, I've found that it's been really easy to just uh, reuse it. And um, I am going to leave it in there for a good amount of time. I'm going to leave it in there for about 30 minutes. And uh, that's going to actually, um, it's going to heat up a little bit, which is another benefit of using degreaser over rubbing alcohol because rubbing alcohol is flammable. Degreaser is not. Um, so yeah, this stuff is going to be cheaper. It's going to be, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's less toxic, but uh, you know, um, I, I recommend this stuff and you can get it at the dollar store. You can get a big jug of it like this for very cheap. Um, so I'm going to let that run for about 30 minutes and then that's actually going to warm up and then that's going to soften the um, the supports and everything and it's going to make it easier to just pop all the supports off of the prints. So I'm going to start this guy. Okay, so I've got my um, my washed pieces out, and um, I'll show you. So the uh, yeah the vibration just of the um, the cleaner, you know, when it's doing its thing, um, is enough to heat up the supports so that they just pop off. It's like um, well, so I have gotten into the habit of uh, doing my own supports and I like to use just um, light supports when I'm printing minis. Um, I feel like there's a lot of uh, a lot of people out there, a lot of um, artists who are doing 3D stuff that they just go way overboard with the supports. You don't really need, I don't feel like you really need like heavy or medium supports for minis. I feel like minis really just only need light supports. So I've gotten into the habit of doing my own supports um, and I've been getting really good results with that. Not like placing every single support, but um, we got a little failure in his cloak back there, but that's still pretty, pretty good. Um, Might have just, I'm just going to have to do a little bit of surgery on him, just cut his coat, little coat a little bit shorter back there. But you can see that once it's um, done like cleaning and, um, and it's kind of warmed up the, uh, the resin a little bit, you can just peel it right off, like super easy. Um, super like painless to doing stuff this way. This is one of the reasons why I love working with resin too, is because um, like if you have one piece of miniatures like this, there's no gluing, you know, there's no um, like assembly or anything like that. Everything just comes out beautifully in one piece. And uh, it's just super easy, you know? Um, so, okay, uh, why do I cure my prints underwater? Um, <laughs> so this is my, um, uh, my AnyCubic wash and cure, right? <clears throat> so the, uh, the wash and cure is, um, it's a two in one thing. So you can switch it from washing to curing, and then you just put time on it and then you push the knob and it'll start doing its thing. Um, I have, I, I, I did use it. I was using the, um, the, the washing function. I felt like it was, first off, it was a little bit too aggressive. It works good for like bigger pieces, but um, for like minis, you know, it's like the, the it, it pushes and then it pulls and pushes and pulls. And it's just a little bit too aggressive with the washing. And I feel like the, um, the ultrasonic cleaner just does a better job. Like there was pieces like guns and hands and stuff that were getting 
trapped in this little wiring and then it was breaking them off because it was just too too strong. So I don't really use this anymore and also the stuff that I was using was it seemed like it's starting to break down the magnets. You can kind of see there like it's starting to look like it's starting to break down the magnets and it's just kind of like peeling the chrome off of this stuff. So I don't really use the washing function anymore but I do use the cure. Um, I use the curing function all the time. Um, so what I, what I do is, you know, again, I'm going to put like 30, 45 minutes on there and then just kind of let it do its thing for, uh, for a while. And this thing, it has, um, it has a little turntable built into it. And then when you take the, uh, this platform piece off it. It also has a little thing that controls the magnets for the washing part. But I, you know, like I said, I don't use that anymore. Um, so I put the lid on it. And then, uh, and then turn on. And then the UV is going to cure those parts from every angle. And part of the reason why this seems to work really well is because the light refracts. It, you know, it goes into the water and sort of bounces around. And then it, at the same time, it kind of does that last little bit of cleaning on the prints. Like um, if there is any resin that's like sticking to them, um, it's going to... Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's going to cure, right? But it's going to be so super thin that you won't even really be able to see it. Um, and then I'll show you with the finished pieces because if there is any of that uncured resin that was on the prints, it's going to look white. Uh, and, and I'll show you that they're, they're really clean looking. It's only in the very deep little recesses that the, uh, the white stuff you can see the the uncured resin that actually shows up okay so these have been uh curing for about 45 minutes and um it's a really really good detail these are looking really really nice um and you know like i, I mean, this is like my new favorite uh like these are these are my favorite things my favorite types of minis to work with now like uh, there's there it, it, there's no glue up there's um, there you can feel good about supporting independent artists instead of giving your money to like giant corporations who hate the fans and um, yeah I mean these are these are great and and these were cheap too I think this um, starter kit like the, all of these Cthulhu minis, um, investigator minis, it's like $10 for each one of these for, for all the files. So that's like $2, a, you know, a mini for the files. And then this was, this was from the, uh, the printing. That's not, um, that's not, uh, or that's, that didn't come through with the, uh, the printing process. So, um, you know, like this guy, one of these guys, you can see like the little, uh, he has like a little cigarette in his mouth. Um, and then that came out and the, uh, this handgun, you know, like the, uh, these are, these are great. So anyways, yeah. Um, that's how I've been, uh, how I've been doing minis and you can see that they also, they don't have any, um, there's no residue. If you, if they did have any residue on them, it would cure like white and um, and also they aren't sticky anymore they're they're totally clean and these these prints have just come out beautifully so anyways uh, that's gonna be it and I will see you in the next one take care of yourselves